Hello, and welcome to this lecture on spatial thinking. The learning objectives for this lesson are to understand what spatial thinking is and why it is important, and be familiar with spatial thinking support tools. Spatial thinking is a concept that is best illustrated with many examples, and in this lecture, I will give you many examples of what is meant by spatial thinking. Spatial thinking is a skill that we learn starting at a very young age. In this picture, the young girl can be seen fitting shapes that represent U.S. states into a puzzle. Behind her, you can also see another puzzle that requires thinking spatially about how shapes relate to one another. We use spatial thinking every day, whether we are aware of it or not. For example, counting using one's fingers, planning road trips, and reasoning about travel distances using a map, or using space as a metaphor for time, such as the event is far off in the future. Spatial thinking has been more formally defined as being composed of three elements. The concepts of space, tools of representation, and processes of reasoning. In the following slides, I explain each of these elements in further detail. The concepts or knowing about space is the idea of understanding space and spatial relationships from different perspectives. For example, when you go traveling, you might consider your road trip based on the miles you have to travel, like shown in the Google Maps image on the left, the time it takes to arrive at your destination, or perhaps how much money you have to spend on gasoline, airline tickets, or some other cost. Knowing about space can also involve different kinds of spaces themselves. For example, the image on the top right shows the XY Cartesian space that you might remember from high school math class, where points are assigned to a coordinate based on an XY axis value. Contrast this type of space with latitude and longitude space shown on the bottom right, which is used to reference locations on the Earth's surface using angular measurements. Representations of space is the idea of different ways in which spatial phenomena and relationships can be graphically or perhaps even digitally represented. For example, the image on the left shows a variety of map projections that have been developed for representing two-dimensional views of the Earth, which is a three-dimensional object. Note the various distortions in land, size, and shape that occur because of map projections. The images on the right are known as figure-ground relationships. This is the idea of one element of the image drawing your attention, also known as the figure, and the other items provide background context or the ground. Note in these images how the use of black and white can be shifted to change the representation of figure and ground relationships. For example, black is used to show the impact zone figure in the top image, and white is used to show the disaster area in the bottom image. Processes of reasoning is the idea of using spatial thinking to make decisions. For example, the image on the upper right shows a contour map. A contour map can be used for and reasoning about and ultimately making a decision about a path one might take for going hiking or perhaps where water is most likely to drain due to slope. The image on the bottom left is perhaps one you're more familiar with, that being a real-time view of traffic provided by Google Maps. Maps like these can be very important for reasoning about a given situation, such as traffic in this case, and be used for reasoning to make a decision about where to plan a travel route to avoid heavy traffic. Geographic Information Systems, or GIS, have long been identified as critical spatial thinking support tools. The following is a brief demonstration of using GIS as a spatial thinking support tool. This demonstration is based on research currently being conducted at the Rochester Institute of Technology that seeks to understand how spatial thinking in the disaster management domain can be taught and learned using a serious GIS game format. Here we see an example of a serious geographic information system or GIS game designed to build spatial thinking skills in disaster management professionals. The software environment has a very minimal interface and basic tools for navigating the map, such as Zoom, 
and pan. The concept with this spatial thinking game is that the game player must make decisions about an oncoming hurricane. This interface gives the game player a series of options they can select for making decisions about the oncoming hurricane. For example, this first question prompts the player to think spatially about how big of a storm surge this area may receive based on the hurricane. Game player has a choice of a 100 yard, 500 yard, or 1000 yard buffer. By clicking the button, the game player can see the results of their spatial thinking in almost real time, as evidenced by this blue buffer appearing along the shoreline. The game continues with other ideas from spatial thinking, such as tools of representation. In this example, the game player has to make a decision about a type of ground elevation representation to add to the map. As an example, a 5 foot increment contour map will be added by clicking this button. The game continues with additional questions designed to test and evaluate spatial thinking ability such as a question about hazardous materials and a buffer, and the type of representation to pick based on vulnerable populations, and then ultimately a challenging spatial thinking question designed to make the game player think about spatial relationships between previous choices, such as the relationship between victims storm surge and hazardous materials as evidenced in picking the union tool. As you can see the game concludes with the player receiving a score on a scale of 1 to 10 with various points awarded based on their selection. In this lecture you learned about spatial thinking. Ideally you now understand what spatial thinking is and why it is important for tasks such as reasoning, decision making, and problem solving. Ideally, as well, you will now be familiar with some basic spatial thinking support tools such as GIS. The following are references that were used in the creation of this lecture. If you enjoyed this lecture, feel free to contact me at the email address below.